Hello, everyone. Welcome to our final session of our stretch and strength and low impact exercise class. It's great to see you all back with us today. Um, so just before we get started, we're going to go over a few housekeeping things like always, just so we're um, all aware of what's going on. So on the webinar platform, you should see on your right hand side, there is a chat box where uh, you can type in any questions or comments throughout the webinar if you would like. And if you don't see a chat box on the right hand side, it might be in a little icon at the bottom of your screen. So it might be a little circular chat box icon, which uh, if you click on, it'll open up the chat box. So that's how you can communicate with us throughout the webinar today. Um, of course, during the actual exercise class, I won't be able to read any of your questions because I'll be moving with you. But we do have Amy, who is my lovely colleague from Parkinson Society, who is going to be monitoring the chat box and she will answer any questions that anybody might have. If at any point during the webinar you find that the audio is lagging or the video starts lagging or something weird starts happening in terms of technology, um, you can feel free to refresh the browser page that you're on or you can close the webinar and reopen it. And that usually does the trick of fixing any of those tech bugs going on. Um, so for those of you who have been here in the last three weeks, you probably know that I'll be talking about Superwalk. <laughs> um, in the top of the chat box, you'll see I pinned a, a website link to Superwalk. Um, after the webinar, if you would like to, feel free to click on that link and uh, that will direct you to our Superwalk website, which is a uh, fundraiser that we do every year. And this year it's happening on the weekend of September the 12th and 13th. And in previous years, the walk was, of course, done as an in-person, uh, sort of like a social gathering event. But of course, with the pandemic this year, everything has gone virtual. So Super Walk will be going virtual this year, meaning that you will be doing the walk uh, in your neighborhoods. But we will still have a sort of a live stream, if you will, that plays and that uh, everyone can do warm ups together um, and uh, some speeches on there and things like that. So if you're interested, you can click on the Superwalk website and um, it'll give you more information on there. Great, okay. So today's our last class of our Stretch and Strengthen uh, Low Impact class. And so we're gonna be building on some of the skills that we've done in the last three weeks. And of course the webinar is recorded just like the other three classes. So if you did want to revisit the class at any point in the future, you can feel free to go on our website or our YouTube channel where you'll get the class uh, linked in. So you can uh, redo the class if you would like to in the future. And seeing as this is, it, this is our last class, if you did have any comments or feedback, we would love to hear from you. So please do send us an email at info at parkinson.bc.ca um, if you would like. We'll type in the email in the chat box a little bit later um, in our webinar today. Okay, great, well, let's get started. So just like before, we're gonna be starting in a seated position. You can see there's a little um, couch set up behind me. So we're gonna start in sitting and then we'll move to standing. But of course, you can feel free to stay seated for the entire class if you would like. And I will give you some adaptations as we go along if you would like to stay seated. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so hopefully you can all see me and hear me. I know it's quite bright behind me, so it's a little bit of a, a darkness um, in my living room today, but hopefully you can still see me okay. We're going to start in sitting with your feet flat on the floor, legs a little bit apart. Arms can just be resting wherever you like. And as we're sitting here, we're just going to start by centering our bodies by thinking about sitting nice and tall on our sit bones. So making sure that we're not slouching back, we're not leaning to one side, but you want to sit right on top of those sitting bones. And as you're sitting here, we're going to think about lengthening the spine into the ceiling, almost like you've got a helium balloon for a head and it's floating up toward the ceiling. Good. From here, we're going to drop the arms down by our side. We're going to take a deep breath in and sweep the arms up. And breath out. 
breath in and out and as we're doing this breath in sweep and breath out sweep with the arms just make sure we're still sitting nice and tall shoulders away from the ears and of course if this is not feeling very great on your shoulders, don't worry. You don't have to bring your up, arms up very high. You can bring out in front of you and down as long as we're opening up through the chest. Let's do one more here. Good. On the next one, we're going to breathe in. And we're going to turn the upper body to one side and bring the arms down. So you're adding in a bit of a rotation this time, turning your breastbone to one side of the room and back around. So with this rotation here, you don't have to rotate as far as you can possibly go because this is just our warm up. So just rotate to a point that you feel a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit stiff and just hold that there and come back to the middle and what you can do here is with each repetition see if you can just turn a little bit more let's do two more good last one still breathing good this time we're going to flow our arms up in front of us and we're going to do a reverse row. We're gonna pull our elbows back, squeeze our shoulder blades together, and then bring them forward again. So it's almost like you've got, if you've got a pencil in between your shoulder blades and you're giving them a good squeeze. That's it. Elbows nice and wide, keeping the shoulders away from the ears. Still sitting up nice and tall. Good. Let's do two more. Let's do one more. Good. And drop the arms. Okay. Still sitting up nice and tall. We're going to bring our palm forward. We're going to bring the arms up behind our head or as close to your head as you can. If you can't reach behind your head, out like this is absolutely fine as well. Whatever works for you, as long as our elbows are not in, you want to open that chest. From here, you're going to shrug those shoulders up to your ears as high as they'll go and then drop them back down. Good, let's do that again. Float those arms up towards your head. Bring those shoulders up as high as they'll go. Drop them back down and bring the arms down. Good. Let's see if we can do four more here. Shoulders up, down, and arms coming down. So you'll notice here as I'm moving my arms, my shoulders are staying far away from my ears until we do the shrug. Good. Two more. Still sitting up nice and tall if you can. Not forgetting to breathe, opening that chest. That's it. Good. And relax, okay. We're going to stretch the sides of our torso. We're gonna float both arms up to a T-shape. Keeping this T-shape, you're going to tip over to one side. Almost like you're touching, you're aiming to touch the floor with one of your fingertips and the other fingertips is going towards the ceiling. Notice here how as I'm stretching, I'm not turning my breastbone forward, I'm keeping my chest open to the front. And then we're gonna come back up. We're gonna tip to the other side, keeping your chest forward, making sure we're not caving in like this. You wanna open that chest forward so you get that nice stretch along the side of your body. And coming back up. Good, let's do one more each side. 
tipping over, feeling that stretch along the side of your body. Coming back up, good, last one. Tipping over, keeping your chest forward and open. That's it, and coming back and drop the arms. Awesome job, everybody. Okay, we're going to start working on our legs. So we're gonna bring our hands to our hips, still sitting up nice and tall, making sure we're not slouching or leaning to the side, right? <laughs> Hands on our hips, shoulders down. And we're going to start by doing some gentle marching on the spot. Doesn't have to be quick. Just go at a pace that is comfortable for you. Thinking about lifting those knees nice and high. And you'll probably see here as I'm lifting my knees, you can see that I'm staying relatively the same height. So imagine you've got a book balancing on your head and you're keeping it there. So it's only your legs moving. So we shouldn't be losing our height like this as we march. We should be nice and tall. Good. We're going to keep the legs going and bring the arms out to the side. This time, you're going to bring your knee to the opposite hand like this. So knee with the opposite hand and open back up. Other side, knee to your opposite hand, open back up. Good. So the reason I'm saying knee to hand versus hand to knee is because I don't want us to be crunching down like this and have our arms be nice and small. You want the arms to be wide and bringing your knee up nice and high to meet your hand and then you return to this open position. That's it. Good. Let's do four more. Four. Three, two, last one. Good, and drop the arms. Okay, now we're going to place our hands on our hips again. We're going to extend one of our legs. So you're gonna straighten your knee on one of your legs, almost like you're showing me the sole of your foot. From here, we're gonna draw some ankle circles. So sitting up nice and tall, shoulders away from the ears, keeping that leg as straight as you can. And you're gonna just do some circles with the ankles, as big as you can go. Doesn't have to be quick. Do it at a pace that is comfortable for you, as long as you're moving as big as you possibly can in that ankle joint. Good. We're gonna go the other way now. So we're gonna rotate our ankle in the opposite direction. As big as you can go, still keeping that knee nice and straight if you can, sitting up nice and tall. Good. And rest, good. Let's do the same on the other leg. We're gonna sit up nice and tall, shoulders down, straighten the knee, almost like you're showing me the bottom of your foot. And then from here, we're drawing some big circles with the ankle. We're gonna try to make sure as we're doing this movement, we're actually drawing circles with the ankle and not some other shape like ovals or triangles or squares, right? We want it to be a full circle. So you wanna reach equally in every direction. Good. Keeping that knee straight if you can. Okay, let's circle the other way. So still drawing circles, not squares or triangles. <laughs> still big circles, good. And rest, okay. Got a bit of a challenger for you here. So similar to what we've just done, you're going to extend one of your legs. So straighten the knees, show me the bottom of your foot. Now, Using the bottom of your foot, you're going to write your name, first and last name, as big as you can go without your knee bending if possible. So you wanna lead with the sole of your foot. So imagine there's a blank canvas in front of you and you're using the sole of your foot to write your first and last name. That's it. Writing as big as you can, 
Keeping the sole of the foot up. Good. And when you're done, you can switch to the other leg. So same thing, straightening that knee, showing us the bottom of your foot. And you're using that bottom of your foot to write your name as big as you can. Can we feel our thighs burning a little bit? <laughs> Good. It doesn't have to be fast. It's entirely up to you what pace you want to do. As long as you're straightening that knee, sitting up tall, and writing your name with the bottom of your foot. Good. And rest when you're done. Good job. Okay. So, our next exercise that we're going to do is going to be a preparation for our standing. So we're going to be doing some sit to stand practice, just like we've done in the previous weeks. But of course, if you want to stay seated the entire time, that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to show you the seated version first. So if you didn't want to stand and you want to stay in your chair, absolutely fine. What you're going to do is you're going to place your hands on your chair or the arms of your chair, depending on what you're sitting on. And you're going to imagine someone's grabbed the front of your t-shirt and they're pulling your chest forward over your toes, so much so that your bottom hovers off the seat. So don't be afraid to go forward. And then you're gonna lower your bottom back down, sit up nice and tall again. And then again, you're rocking forward, almost like someone's pulling your shirt forward over your feet to lift the bottom off the seat then you lower down and sit again okay so if you want to stay seated you're just going to do some bum lifts here like this okay so again like this whereas if you want to do the standing version you're going to start exactly the same but we're going to take it a little bit further you're going to imagine again someone's grabbed the front of your shirt and they're pulling you forward over your feet so much so that your bottom hovers off the seat keeping your weight in the middle of your legs push down into the floor push the floor away from you push the hips forward to stand and then you're going to sit back down again stick the bottom back chest forward keeping your weight in the middle of your legs and then you sit back down okay Let's do that again. You're gonna bring your chest forward over your legs, lift your bottom, put your weight in the middle of the legs, push the floor away from you, and stand. Good. And then you're going to do the same thing in reverse to sit back down. Okay, so you can either do that standing version or you can do the bottom lift version if you wanna stay seated. We're going to try to do eight together, nice and slow. We're not doing it fast. We're not going to rock with momentum forward. We're going to try to use the strength of our legs and bodies to do this movement. Okay, are we ready? Here we go. Here's number one. Making sure we're bringing our weight forward enough to be able to push to stand. And then we come back down, leaning forward with the chest. Good. Here's number two. Push the floor away from you. Stick your bottom forward to stand nice and tall. Good. And then we come back down. Good. Here's number three. Make sure you push your bottom forward. Push your hips forward at the top. And then we sit back down. Good. Here's number four. Doing good. Thinking about pushing your feet deep into the ground. Good. Almost there. This is number five. That's it. Trying to make sure you hinge forward at the hips. Number six, imagine that person grabbing your t-shirt, bringing you forward. Good. Two left. Keep 
keeping your weight in the middle of your feet. That's it. Last one. We're going to stay standing. Push the floor away, chest up nice and tall, and rest. Okay, good. So now we're in standing. Our first exercise is going to be a dynamic stretch for the back of our leg. We've done this one before, so I'm going to show you. You're going to bring one leg forward. The other leg behind is going to be bent. So you're bending the back knee, straighten the front knee, and you're going to keep your back nice and tall. You're going to hinge forward at the hips. See how my back is nice and long? I'm not arching. So keeping your back nice and long, hinge forward at the hips, and you're going to do a breaststroke arm, almost like you're swimming, and then stand back up. Same thing on the other side. Straighten the knee, bend the back knee, hinge forward at the hips, breaststroke arms. Good. Okay, so we're going to keep alternating like this. Breaststroke arms. So you should feel a stretch at the back of your thigh of the lengthened leg. Now, if you're sitting down, it's going to be the same thing, except you'll have to move forward in your chair a little bit. And you're going to extend one of your knees. And then you're doing the same thing, hinging forward at the hips with your breaststroke arms, like so. So you can choose what version you want to do. Both are absolutely fine. So choose whichever version feels better on your body today. Okay, so we're going to keep going. So whether you're sitting or standing, let's see if we can do four more. I'm going to stand up for the next four. Here we go. Let's do four. Three, see if you can deepen the stretch. Two, good, last one. One, and rest. Okay, our next one now is gonna be strengthening that exact same place we've just stretched. So, we're gonna start with our feet about hip width apart, like this. I'm just turning sideways so you can see me. You're going to soften your knees a little bit. So see how I'm bending my knees slightly? Not a lot, just a bit. From here, you're going to imagine the knees are locked in this position. So you can't straighten it anymore and you can't bend it anymore. You're going to start by having your spine nice and long and you're going to hinge forward at the hips like so, noticing how my knee angle does not change. Keep your back nice and straight if you can, and then you come back up. So all of this is you're working on the back of your thigh. Now we're going to add in the arms. We're going to bring our arms out to the side, slight bend to the knees, and you're going to hinge forward at the hips without your back curving, and then you're going to stand back up again, making sure the knees are staying the same bent angle. They're not bending more and they're not straightening more. Okay, now if you're sitting down, we're gonna do this a little bit differently. You're gonna walk your feet out a little bit further and a little bit wider if you like. Arms forward, oh, sorry, not arms forward, arms to the side, body forward. So spine nice and long. You're going to keep your back straight and hinge forward at the hips and then come back up. Try not to lose your balance as you're doing that. So same thing in sitting like this and in standing, slight bend to the knees, hinging forward, keeping the knees the same angle the whole time. We're gonna do this together. Let's see if we can do six. Whether you're standing or sitting, absolutely fine. It's up to you. Okay, here we go. Here's one. Two. If you need to hold on to something for balance, please do. Here's three. Four. Keeping that back nice and straight if you can. Five. Well done. Good, last one. Here's six. 
and rest. Well done, everybody. Okay, let's do a little bit of a stretch here. We're going to bring the legs a little bit wider apart. We're going to push our hip to one side and raise our arms to the opposite side. So you don't have to lift your arms up here if you feel like that's hurting your shoulder. You can bring them down and across. It's absolutely fine as long as your arms are in the opposite direction of your hip. Good, let's do the same thing the other side, pushing your hip to one side, bringing those arms up either overhead or across, entirely up to you. Good. Let's do two more here, pushing the hips to one side, reaching the arms up in the opposite direction. Good. One more. Last time, other side, push the hips over, reach the arms up overhead or below, as long as they're in the opposite direction of your hips. Good, and rest. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit of a movement contrast now. We're gonna bring our legs together or as close as you feel comfortable. And what we're going to do here is we're going to curl ourselves into as small of a ball as you can. So think as small as you can. And from here, we're going to step out to the side and open our arms nice and wide, open our legs nice and wide. And then we're going to step back in, curling into a ball as small as you can. Then you're going to stretch out to the other side, reaching nice and wide, stepping nice and wide with your legs. And then we come back in again, as small as you can be. And then you're going to go as big as you can be. And then back in again. Now, if you're sitting exactly the same, start with your legs together. You're curling into a small ball. And then you're reaching out to the side, reaching, opening the arms, opening that leg. And then you're coming back in as small as you can be. And then you're reaching to be as big as you can be. Notice my fingers are open here. Okay, so we go in and we go out. So we're gonna do this at a pace that's comfortable for you. Okay, we're gonna try to go for 10 here. One, open that chest, good. Really feel the height difference here. So I'm nice and short here, and then I'm nice and tall here. Good, here's number three. See how much room you can take up as you open. Good, this is number four, as small as you can be, and then opening up as wide as you can be. Good. And in. Here's number five. Good. Number six. Really feel that nice stretch across your chest. Number seven, see if you can pick up your feet a little bit higher each time. Number eight, pick up those knees a little bit higher if you can. That's it. Good. One more here. Lift those knees up. Stretch. Hold it here for five. Four, three, two, one, and rest. Well done, everybody. Good job. Okay, we're going to continue on with our weight shifting. I'm going to turn sideways so you can see me. Now, we're going to practice our backwards stepping or our backwards lunge. We've done this before in the previous weeks. So, you're going to bring the leg back, so one of your legs back into a lunge position. Now, you'll notice here when I'm lunging, I'm, it's almost like I'm kneeling on the floor, right? I've got my back knee towards the ground, and that's what you want to aim for with your body upright. But 
If you can't do that, don't worry. It's absolutely fine. All you need to do is step back, okay? And bend those knees if you can. So you can also step back and bend those knees, keeping your body upright. So it's kind of like your body is like an elevator. You're going up and down, but you're very vertical, right? So we're not leaning because an elevator goes up and down this way. So that's what you're aiming for with your body. So the movement here is you're stepping back or lunging back, opposite arm to hand. So opposite arm or opposite arm to leg, opposite arm to leg, like this. And all we're doing in this exercise is we're practicing our ability to weight shift. Okay? Now, if you're sitting, it's of course a little bit different because you can't bring your leg back in a chair. So instead, we're going to bring it forward. So we're going to bring one leg forward, reach the opposite arm to leg at the same time, and bring it back. Bring it forward, bring it back. Now you'll notice here, if I go sideways, you'll notice as I'm doing that in sitting, see how my back arm is reaching as well? So it's not just my front arm, but it's my back arm as well. So opposite arm, two leg reaching. Same thing if you're standing, it's both arms, not just the front one. Okay, let's try this together. Just do this at your own pace, it doesn't have to be fast. I want you to work on the ability to transfer your weight. Keeping that chest up if you can. It's almost like if I covered your arms and legs with something and I can only see your torso, it shouldn't really look like you're moving at all. That's how strong and steady your upper body should be. And really use this opportunity to work on the arms being able to go behind you. So I think a lot of the times when we walk, we don't really get the arm swing. Or if you do try to replicate the arm swing, we end up only going forward. But you want to work on that back arm in opposition as well. So really use this opportunity to try to get the arm back. Good, well done. Let's see if we can do four more in your own time. Are we still breathing? Yeah. <laughs> Good, well done, keep going. I know this one's a little bit harder, but you're almost there. I've got one left to do. Good, and I'm gonna rest here. Okay, so. Our next one, we're going to work on our legs a little bit more. So you'll see a lot of the theme from today is going to be weight shifting because we want to do lots of weight shifting to help decrease the amount of freezing you might get and also the amount of falls you might get. So we're going to add on to that. So we're going to bring our legs right underneath our hips. So we want our legs to be a little bit narrow because they're right underneath the hips. We don't want them out like this, okay? A little bit narrow. Now, all we're going to do is we're going to do a simple squat here and float both arms up. So let me turn sideways. When we squat, we're not doing this. So see how my knees are going forward and my body's going back? We're not doing that. We're going to try to keep our knees over our feet and we're going to stick our bottom back, bring our chest forward, almost like you're hovering your bottom over a seat. And then come back up, okay? So, Feet a little bit narrow. We're going to do a single squ squat and float the arms up. And then we're gonna stand back up. Now, we're gonna bring our leg out to the side so it's wider. We're gonna do another squat a little bit wider. Bring our arms out to the side and bring the leg back in. So same thing, a squat, a narrow squat here. Arms floating up. And we're gonna do a wide squat, bringing the arms out to the side, noticing how my knees are not coming in. You're trying to keep them open, keep the hips open if you can, okay? So narrow squat, wide squat, okay? Now, if you're sitting, 
We're gonna do something similar, although we can't quite do a squat because we're already sitting. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna float the arms up. We're gonna go straighten our leg, bring it down. And then we're gonna do the same leg again, straighten the leg, bring the arms out and bring it in. And then we're gonna go for the other leg. Arms forward, arms to the side. So you're essentially, you're doing a knee straightening movement. So forward, side, okay? So that's the seated version. Forward, side, okay? Let's try this. In your own time, you can choose whichever version feels better for your body today. Here we go. Narrow squat. Wide squat. Narrow squat. Good. Wide squat. So notice here, bottom is going back, right? Good, are we breathing? <laughs> Keeping those shoulders away from the ears if we can, so we're not having our shoulders up here, but you wanna keep them down. Good, well done. Breathing. <sighs> Seeing if you can sink that bottom a little bit lower each time. Or if you're sitting, can you lift that leg a little bit higher each time? Good, keep going guys. So if you're sitting, reach that leg even higher each time. Good, and of course you don't have to do it at my speed. Feel free to slow this down. This one is not about speed, we're just gonna be getting those leg muscles firing. Good. Let's do one more. One more narrow, one more wide. And rest. Good. Well done, everybody. Okay. I'm going to stand back up. So, now we're gonna bring our feet a little bit wider and we're gonna do a little bit of trunk rotation. After holding our body so rigid in all those squats, we're gonna start to stretch that out. So really gently, you're gonna, you're gonna bend those knees and turn your body to the side. Bend your knees and turn your body to the side. So I'm reaching my opposite hand to hip, opposite hand to hip. Feeling that rotation in the spine and noticing how even though we're rotating the spine, we're not punching forward, we're keeping our spine as tall as possible. So you're keeping it tall while rotating. Good. Tall while rotating. So if you're sitting, same thing, keep going. You're going to bring those arms around. Bring those arms around. Good. Let's do four more. That's it, two more. Let's do one last one. Good, and rest, okay. This time, we're gonna bring our arms to a T. We're going to reach down to one side, and it's almost like you're trying to reach your fingertips to the outside of that knee. Or if you can go further, go further, but you're aiming for the knee. Keeping your chest forward, chest open, so we're not rotating down like this. Keeping your chest open. Hold it here for three, two, one and back up. So same thing if you're sitting, same thing with the arms. Bending to one side, keeping that chest open, reaching for the knee. Or if you're sitting, see if you can reach your ankles for three, two, 
One and back up. Good. Let's do one more each side. Down to the side, chest forward, chest open, holding for three, two, one, and back up. Good. One more. Reach to the other side, chest forward, holding for three, two, one, and back up and relax the arms. Okay. We're going to do a little bit of ankle movement here. We're going to place our feet on the floor in a comfortable stance. So it doesn't have to be narrow, doesn't have to be wide. Just put your feet where you're comfortable. And from here, we're going to lift our heel on one side and bring it down. We're gonna lift our heel on the other side and bring it down. And we're gonna keep going in alteration. So we're gonna lift the heel and down. Lift the heel. And down. Keep going. If you're sitting, same thing. Lift the heel and down. Lift the heel and down. The most important thing as you're doing this is you're trying to keep your spine nice and long. So don't let yourself sink down or lean to the side. Try to imagine that helium balloon you've got for a head and it's reaching right up into the ceiling. Good. Keep going. Lift the heel and down. Lift the heel and down. So you'll notice here there's a bit of weight transference. You're transferring the weight from side to side. Good, keeping tall. That's it, okay? We're gonna keep the legs going. And now we're gonna try to add in the arms. So you're gonna reach the arms, the opposite arm to the popped foot. So see here, this foot is the one that's off, uh, got the heel off the floor. So I'm reaching the opposite arm up and the back arm goes backwards like so. Same thing on the other side. So you want your arms to be relatively straight. So imagine you're like a toy soldier. You haven't really got joints. You're a little bit stiff. So if I go from the side, Notice how my back arm is also reaching. So it's not just a forward, it's not just a forward arm like this, but you're reaching that back arm. And notice how tall I'm trying to be here. Imagine you're balancing that book and you're keeping nice and tall. Same thing in sitting. You'll just have to bend your elbows a little bit more as you reach back with the arms so you don't hit your chair. Good, let's keep going. That's it. We'll go 10, nine, stay nice and tall, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, last one, one, and relax those arms. Okay, well done. So now we're gonna reach towards a wall or a table that you have nearby, and we're gonna do a quad stretch for the front of our leg. So you probably remember this from previous weeks. We're going to place the leg, so the, the front of the shin or the ankle, on a chair or something behind you. Hold on to a wall, hold on to a table, something to keep you steady. Knees should be in the same position, and you're going to push those hips forward to stretch the front of the hip and the front of the thigh. If you want a more advanced stretch, you can feel free to reach back and grab hold of your ankle and pull it towards your bottom. But of course, not everybody has the mobility in the shoulders and the hips to do that. So having your foot on a chair is absolutely fine. You get the same stretch. So pushing those hips forward, holding it here for five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Good. Let's try the same thing on the other side. Reaching that leg back onto a chair or holding onto the ankle if you like. Knees together, 
push those hips forward to feel the stretch at the front of the hips. Holding it here for five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Good. Okay, this time you're still holding onto the wall or table. You're going to send one of your legs back like this. You're going to bend forward at the knee. So the knee that's forward, you're bending it. The back leg, you're straightening and reaching that heel to the floor, keeping the bottom tucked underneath. You should feel a stretch a little bit at the front of the hip, but mostly in the calf. If you're aiming to reach that heel to the floor, if you can't feel it, walk that leg out further. Good, make sure we're breathing as we're doing this calf stretch and a little bit of the hip stretch. Good, let's hold it for another five, four, three, two, one, and back up. Good, we're gonna do the other leg. So send the other leg back now, bend that front knee, reach that heel back, keep that knee straight. We're tucking the bottom underneath to feel a stretch in the calf and a little bit at the front of the hips. Making sure we're breathing here into the stretch, reach that heel to the floor. Let's hold it for another five, four, three, two, one and rest good okay now for the calf stretch i've just realized i forgot to show you the version and sitting if you're sitting down and you want to do that stretch you're going to extend one of your legs forward keep the heel on the floor pull the toes up towards you as far as you can and you should feel that stretch in the bottom of the calf as well if not Take a towel, loop it around your foot, and pull upwards. Same thing. So the more your foot goes up, the more of a stretch you'll feel in the calf muscle. Okay. We're going to do some deep breaths here to finish. Whether you're sitting or standing, just follow along. Breath in. And out. Again. Reach their arms up to the side and breath out. Good. And again, reach to the side, breathe in and breath out. Let's do one more. And breath out. Good. Hands together, elbows to the side, pressing the palms together. Pressing the hands into your breastbone. We're going to turn the upper body to one side. Breathing in here. Two deep breaths. Back to the middle. Good. Other side. Turning the breastbone to the opposite side. Shoulders down. Two breaths here. One more. And rest those arms. Shake those arms out. Shake the legs out if you like. And you are done. Thank you so much, everybody. Give yourselves a round of applause. You've done it. Four weeks of our low impact exercise class. Well done, everybody. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Hopefully you've enjoyed that class and it wasn't too difficult. Um, if you did want to revisit the class in the future, you can, um, of course, go through our website to the recording, which uh, Amy has kindly put up on the chat box already. You can click on that link in order to get to our videos. Um, or if you would like, you can go through our YouTube channel, which is Parkinson Society BC, for uh, our video recordings as well on there. 
And of course, because this is our last class, if you did have any feedback or comments or you have any suggestions for future webinars, please feel free to send us an email at info at parkinson.bc.ca, which is um, also on the chat box. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> Very helpful. Great. Okay, well, I don't see any questions on the chat box. So I hope that means that everybody was doing the exercise classes and um, you were all enjoying it, hopefully. <laughs> Good. Thank you so much for your wonderful comments. And I do apologize about the lighting today. It's uh, unfortunately my, my townhouse faces uh, in a way where the light all comes through the front window. Um, so there's probably a bit of shadow as I'm doing the exercises, but hopefully um, you can still see what I was doing during the class. Thank you very much, everybody, for the lovely comments. Um, feel free to have a look at our future webinars if you would like. And don't forget to check out the Superwalk website, which is also at the top of the chat box. Thanks, everybody. Um, if you wanted to look at future exercise classes, we do have a balance exercise class coming up. And then in October, we have an exercise class for freezing. So if you're interested in any of those, please feel free to look on the website. Thanks, everybody. Again, my name is Shelly, and it's been great working with you for the last month, and I hope you enjoy your weekends. Bye, everybody. Thank you.